Hey everyone, it's me, Kirk Maston here at Maston Labs, and I can't wait to show you a lot of really cool stuff today. We're gonna to be talking about the difference between Fuji Original, so like shooting Fuji at box speed, Fuji Films, and then Fuji Pushed, so comparing those, and then also comparing Portra, Portra Original, all of the films within Portra Original with Portra Pushed, and how they change. So, it's gonna be a really good show. Uh, if you are a first time visitor, please hit the subscribe Eh, the subscription button and ding the dinger so you don't miss a single episode uh it's it's great we do we do a show every single week so you don't want to miss out you can learn a ton here and you know really become part of a great community so all right let's get started i'm going to quickly go over our three-step workflow this is kind of where a lot of the magic happens and the magic is called simplicity you just want to apply the preset adjust exposure and then adjust white balance and tint. And it's important that you do it in this order. The preset sets the stage for the uh, film emulation in terms of like color and micro contrast. You need to do that first, and then you adjust exposure, usually bringing it up a little bit because a lot of sensors protect highlights. And then last but not least, and maybe most important of all, adjust your white balance and tint. Make sure it's not too warm, not too cool, not too green, and not too magenta. And then you have a beautiful photo. It's that easy. Okay, so let's kick it off. Um, we're, we're gonna start with Fuji Original. This is one of our, our most popular packs by a mile. A lot of wedding photographers use this one because it has those nice light and pastel colors, very ethereal, very fine art. Uh, desaturated. Um, it's it's really a look that's ta taken off. There's a lot of uh, people out there wanting a light and airy look and that is how you get it. It's not appropriate on every photo and that is something I'm going to be going over today and if you watch a lot of my other videos I go over when it is appropriate to use a certain look or film for a picture and when it isn't. Sometimes it will clash. It just won't fit right. So I'm gonna start with an image that can kind of go either way. Um, it, it's an image where we have a very light and airy kind of situation. We have studio light, it's, it's fairly evenly lit. There may be a reflector on the opposite side of this model. Um, I think there is, because these highlights are, or these, these shadows are opened up pretty nicely. And there's a little catch light in her eye here. That, that may be from the window on the other side, I'm not sure. Um, but I think there's a little reflector or something on the opposite side. Maybe this like kind of peach colored wall. There's like another panel next to her. She's wearing lighter clothing. Um, it's, it's, she's wearing a lot of neutrals. So anytime I say neutral, I mean something that is usually uh, white, black, or gray. However, uh, nude, rose, and brown can also be very neutral. And we're seeing all those colors here. So it's an image that's got a very light and airy palette. However, However, and this is why it's an interesting image, her expression, I think, falls clearly in the moody side. So moody meaning mysterious. Uh, dark and moody meaning dark lighting, a mysterious look. Uh, there's a little bit of moodiness in this photo. It's not like a true dark and moody photo, like you know something like this, uh, where it's 100% you know, dark and moody. Moody expression, moody situation. This has got a little bit of a blend. So with an image like this, I'm gonna just start out with Fuji 400H, very classic light and airy look. And it, it's nice and clean, nice colors. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't like radically change the image. It just kind of really brings out beautiful skin tones, uh, keeps the shadows from going too dark, too deep, nice neutral contrast. It's, it's just a great look. It's easily one of our most popular looks by far, and it looks great on this photo. Um, as far as like doing the rest of the three-step edit, this was shot so nicely that there's really not much to do. I could uh, adjust exposure up maybe a little bit if I want it to be a little bit more light and airy. Uh, as far as temperature and tint goes, the temperature looks great. Uh, the tint could be maybe, it, maybe it's a little bit magenta. I'm seeing a little bit of magenta in the floor, but that could be coming from this rose-colored board in the background. If I look at the white in her pants, they look, they look pretty neutral. I don't see any like color color uh, casts. I'm also looking at the flowers here. Oh, by the way, that is where you look for tint. 
not in the skin, that will screw you up. You need to look for a neutral. So these, these flowers here are great and these pants are great. And I'm looking and I don't really see any issue. Maybe it's a little bit magenta. I can try pulling the tint back from plus 14 to like plus 10. Yeah, that's, that's even a little better. So like plus 10, just a tiny correction. So we go from that to that. I don't even know if you can even see it at home, uh, but just like look down in this area. Let me do it one more time. This is before and that's after. It's like the smallest tiny touch of color. Um, and seeing those subtle differences, that, not gonna say that I'm a master of anything, but that, seeing those little tiny subtle differences in tint especially, that is what separates someone who is a really super high-end, well-tuned editing machine from someone who's kind of still struggling. That is where you're gonna get your best color for your images, not just skin tone, but for the entire image. Um, and it's seeing just those little tiny points difference. Uh, and that, that is why actually, again, I don't want to go too deep into this, but a lot of the like kind of Etsy presets or presets that are not based on anything, uh, they can be so heavy handed that you're not even able to see where there is a tint issue in your image because they're, your image is so layered with like extreme presetness. Uh, whereas these are built from actual film scans that took many, many years to develop. So, uh, yeah, we keep it, we keep it real and clean and beautiful, um, like film. So here's before here's after hardly any work. So this image works really well with Fuji 400H. Um, I'm going to come back to it in a minute. I'm going to do just a few more Fuji edits so you can kind of get a feel for what you know, the Fuji original pack, you know, what it feels like. Uh, again, we have, and then I'll go back and compare it to Fuji push. So we have another image that's all set up for light and airy. Uh, this guy is wearing, you know, a neutral colored top. Uh, the background is very neutral. Uh, the lighting is a little bit harsh on his face. That may, might be an issue. Uh, I can show you some tricks to deal with that. But overall, he's sitting in open shade, which is a great situation for light and airy. And in fact, if you really want to get into light and airy, we have another video that we've made that is just about light and airy, like from, you know, what they should wear to how you should pose them to the light they should sit in to everything. So you may want to check that out as well. Um, but for, for him, we're going to do, we'll do Fuji 400H again, or actually let's do Fuji 160 NS. It has a little more uh, saturation in, uh, the magentas uh, and cyans and a little bit in the green it can be really nice for this image. So 160 NS, I'm going to increase the exposure a little tiny bit. I want to just bring out these midtones here. Uh, looking at his skin and just kind of the whole situation, the whole background, uh, I can see that it's a little bit too cool. So I'm going to warm it up just a tiny bit. And looking around at neutrals, uh, we've got Part of his arm in the shade, so it's kind of turning blue. Uh, light, l the temperature of light is cooler in the shade, and it's warmer in bright sun. If you look at uh, classical like impressionist paintings, you'll see that right away. Like the shadows are painted with blue, and the highlights are painted with like yellow or orange, and that's why it started turning kind of blue here. But if we look at his opposite arm, we can see that there's a little bit of magenta creeping in into these shadows and everywhere around here. So I'm gonna pull back on the tint just to get rid of that, just a tiny, tiny bit. That should kind of just even out the skin tones, make everything look good. Okay, so here is before and after with Fuji 160 NS. It's got, it's got kind of a slightly Mediterranean feel or this film does, Fuji 160 NS with the more saturated magentas and cyans looks good on this with this kind of sharp uh, contrast here with the you know bright sun on one side of his face and kind of the seascape blowing out we can also add a tone profile which really the best way to think of these unique tools is that they are contrast control tools uh, they come from the Fuji Frontier scanner that's where we've developed everything for the last 10 years and these controls let you deal with these highlights, these blown out areas without making the entire image look like HDR, which you, you don't want. 
So if I click on Highlight Soft, you can see how it just kind of brings in those highlights that we're struggling with on the side of his face and in the sky behind him. So I'm going to add that. If we wanted to go even a little bit more, um, you know, even across the entire image, like bring out detail in his hair, we could have picked All Soft instead. To bring it out even more, but I, I don't I don't want to lose kind of these nice mid tones, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna cut it off right there. That looks good. So here is before and after with Fuji 400H. Okay, so you've seen some examples of Fuji Original. So this is these are Fuji films shot at box speed, and I'm talking about real films that were then emulated for Lightroom and Capture One. And they look good on situations where you have this kind of light and airy, uh, you know, setup to begin with. Now, if I was to go back and use Fuji Pushed, it may or may not work with these images. Fuji Original is a nice, neutral, clean palette. Fuji Pushed is where you take the same films. So you take 160NS or Fuji 400H or 800Z the real film. And what you do is you increase its ISO artificially by underexposing the film and then taking it to the lab and saying, push this film one stop. And what they do is they develop it a little bit longer in the chemistry and they force the film to be a higher ISO to match what you shot it at. Now, if that is like way, way too much to, to like, you know, ingest in your mind, I get it and you're in luck because we have another video that's all about push film so that can clear that up for you but it's a way of making your film look different and stylizing it and with Fuji original when you push it any of those Fuji films and you, you push them they are what you would find in the Fuji push pack and they're gonna have more color more punch uh, they're gonna be very joyful uh, very saturated and the highlights are gonna shift to pink that is what happens with Fuji films when you push them. Completely different story with portrait films, any of the Kodak films when you push them. The highlights do not turn pink. In fact, the shadows turn kind of red and it's a totally different vibe than pushing Fuji films. So back to Fuji pushed, same image. If I go to Fuji pushed and this was edited with 400H, Say if I edit it with 400H push two stops, watch how different it looks because the film was pushed and developed as push film. So here is Fuji 400H push two stops. And you can see those shifts in the highlights and midtones in particular towards a peachy pink look. And it's a really, it's it, to be honest, it's a fantastic look for a lot of different kinds of wedding photography or engagement photography when you want a kind of, I don't know, fantastical light and airy look, like light and airy, but not so serious, like light and airy, but make it springtime. Um, that is what it feels like to me. And it, and it can look really good. If this is a little bit too much pink for you, you can dial it back by going to like 400H push one stop and you have just, you know, whoops. You can see that it adds it just a little bit instead of like so much. So you're not pushing the film two stops, you're pushing it one. So it's not such an extreme change at the lab, putting it in the chemistry. Okay, the other thing that I hope you noticed is how much different the contrast is. So before Fuji 400H, this is, this is just 400H box speed, right? That is pushed one stop and the contrast just makes it pop and it's a different feeling. I find that this, that the looks in Fuji Color Push are especially good for images that have a lot of joy or life or movement in them. Um, I think it works pretty well with this image. Her expression is still kind of mysterious. If she was just like, I don't know, jumping off the floor, like laughing or something, it would just be like perfect. Um, but it still really works here. If we go to this guy here and go to uh, Fuji Pushed, so you can also see kind of similar changes. So this is 160 NS, okay? Here is 160 NS pushed one stop. 
Now you see the the pink and peachy kind of colors kind of you know come in from all sides. Uh, the skin tones change quite a bit. Um, I'll, I'll roll off and on so you can see it a little bit better. But this is box speed, 160 NS, and this is pushing it. So if I was out shooting real film and I had my Fuji 160 NS, fantastic film, I could either shoot it at 160 or actually I'd probably shoot it at ISO 100. That's a whole nother thing to talk about there, like the real speed of film. But I would shoot it at 100 and it would look like that. Just nice and even, great. Now, if I was to take the same film and shoot it at like 320, so I'd set my meter in my camera and shoot it at 320, I would technically be underexposing that film. But, but, and it's a big but, I would go into the lab and tell them what I did and we would be like, yes, let's push it one stop. Let's transform this film into a higher ISO film by letting it cook in the chemistry a little longer. And then you would get this. You get this look. I hope that makes sense. If you're watching this and you have any questions, please let me know and I will answer them for you. This is a lot to take in. And I've been shooting film for, I'm 43. I've been shooting it since I was 20. So that's tw 23 years. So if I go too fast on something or you know, assume you know something that seems complicated, stop me and let me know. That is called the curse of knowledge. Look it up. It's a very bad thing uh, where you know too much and then you, you forget like how to teach the thing. Anyway. Um, all right, enough. Okay, I see you guys falling asleep. Don't do that. Here we go. So that, that's kind of where Fuji and Fuji Push kind of meet and how they change. Let's scoot on over now to Portra. So Portra, the Portra original pack. Let's go over to, let's go over here actually. Let's go to Portra original and we're gonna start talking about that. So Portra original is a pack that we make that has three fantastic Portra films. If you are getting into film photography, I highly recommend starting with Portra 400. It is the raw file of film. It's very hard to screw it up. You could shoot it underexposed and still get a pretty good result. And I can't say that about any other film. Most films, you wanna make sure that you overexpose. If, if in doubt, overexpose. That is the golden rule, except for slide film and no one shoots slide film, so don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> slide film, I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, so this has got Portra 160, Portra 400, Portra 800. It's a great all around pack. It is in, in, it's very similar to Fuji original in the sense that it's a very good baseline, everyday use, like it's a good starting point for a lot of stuff. So let's start with it. Uh, I find portrait is good for kind of real life images. Uh, they don't have to be particularly joyful. They can just be real slices of life and you just want a nice neutral starting point. So here is Portra 400. Going to increase the exposure just a little bit. And then going through the three-step workflow, I'm going to warm it up. Uh, portrait films should be edited or portrait presets when you use them based off, portrait, based off of portrait films. When you use any kind of portrait emulation, portrait 160, 400, 800, you want to edit a little bit on the warm side. That is where that film, the real film natively sits when you scan it. It's a warm film. Fuji films are natively cool. They, they're very kind of blue, but portrait films are warm. So you can see I immediately warmed it up and now it feels right. All the colors are kind of locking into place. Is there a tint issue? I don't know. Let's look. It's hard to tell by a skin tone. They have different kinds of skin. I'm not even gonna look there. I'm gonna look at neutrals. Where do I find neutrals? I find it in this sweater. I find it in this pillow. That's where I'm gonna look. Uh, looking at it, I, and maybe this back wall, although I don't, I don't trust that that is a neutral color. I don't know. But looking right here, it, frankly, it looks pretty neutral. You don't have to adjust every photo. Just because you took a photo doesn't mean that the white balance is always wrong. It can sometimes be right. Uh, a broken clock is right twice a day. So, um, so yeah, 
I'm gonna leave uh, the tint where it is because I zoomed in. I don't, these look about as neutral as you can get and there is your edit. Super duper simple. A nice clean Portra 400 edit. This is like as old school as it gets. I mean, for me, it's the first film I really shot on. I built my career around Portra 400. It worked really great for me. Um, so yeah, that's a basic Portra 400 edit. One thing I may do is actually grab a tool out of my toolkit, and that is lens correction on because I just can't stand this uh, vignetting in the corners, and that's just me. I don't like it. See, I think that looks better using that tool, lens correction on. We have a whole toolkit with every pack that we make. Uh, we actually have an entire system built within every pack we make that you just kind of go from top to bottom, and they have practical fixes for your photos that will never make them look cartoony or weird or fake. It's just about like real practical stuff. And one of my favorite tools is lens correction on. It's great. Um, it just cleans up the corners, fixes distortion, and you just have a better image. One other tool I may use is I go back into my tone profile section. This is the contrast control. Um, her cheek is a little bit hot and the back of her neck is a little bit hot, like a little bit too bright. Um, I may use like all soft to kind of bring that all in or just highlight soft. I think I'm going to use all soft and that looks great. Oh, and there's a, like a little like outlet over here above her head. I can't stand that. Okay. There we go. There. Nice, clean, beautiful, wonderful photo. Really nicely done. And there's your basic portrait 400 edit. Um, I, I'm just gonna go right now over to Portrait Push. What is the difference? So, like I said earlier, when you push Portrait Film, the highlights don't really change. What changes are the lower midtones and the shadows, and they will shift towards a red or a brown color, and it gets more extreme the more you push the film. A lot of people would hear that and go, why the heck would I wanna do that? That sounds terrible. Um, you want to do that because it gives you a really damn cool editorial gritty look. Like if you want something that's a little more stylized, something with a little more mood, it's awesome. It looks really good. I'll do it on this photo. This photo is another photo that can kind of go either neutral or dark and moody. So here's like kind of the neutral look. Let's see what it looks like moodier. And then you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go from the Portra original pack to the Portra push pack. Same films. They've just been shot differently and developed differently. And then we emulated that into presets. Um, so this was Portra 400. Here's Portra 400 push two stops. So very punched up. The uh, it, maybe a little bit too punched up. Let's do 400 push one stop. So one stop, two stops. I think one stop looks pretty good. One stop with all soft like we did before. Um, let me get back to what that, so we can do a straight straight up comparison. Um, so this is Portra 400 box speed. This is Portra 400 push one stop. A lot punchier, or a lot, a lot punchier, a lot more contrast, uh, richer color, a slight shift in, in tones not an insane shift, but just a slight shift. And if it was, you know, Portra 160 pushed one or two stops, I can then show you kind of where these red shifts come from. So uh, maybe not so much in this image. I'll, I'll grab another so you can see. But you can see in general that it becomes more stylized when you push that same film. Dark and moody uh, photographers take note. This is where you get some really cool looks for your imagery. And they're kind of complicated, to be honest. Um, there's a lot happening in the tone curves in, in every channel and then in calibration and hue saturation luminance. Um, and they were pretty tricky to figure out, but I think they're really fun. They're really cool. If you want a pushed film look, they were made much later than the original packs because it took me a few years to really dial it in. Um, this is a perfect dark and moody photo. This is like, if you just made a dark and moody wish, uh, you know, you've got a mysterious look, you have someone who may or may not be clothed in soft light in a, like a cool kind of vintagey room with these kind of fall wintry looking flowers. It's perfect. It's got all the stuff, all the things, a single light source, 
very dark and moody. I will edit this with Portrait Original. Um, let's just do Portrait 160. So this is from the original pack. I'm going to increase the exposure and dial in um, temperature and tint. So I've got, that looks like a good temperature. And then tint, uh, well, I don't really have a neutral to work off of. Maybe these flowers in the wallpaper. Um, I would say that it looks pretty good. Maybe maybe a little bit of magenta needs to be added in. Just a couple points. Let's see, we started at plus two, let's go to plus four. That looks good. Okay, there we go. Portrait 160, nice, clean, kind of desaturated look. Uh, Portrait 160 has the least saturation of all three portrait films. That's just what it, what it do. It is a film built for portraits. Um, actually, all the portrait films are. That's why they're called Portrait. I know, crazy, right? Uh, actually, great branding. So, this is not a bad look. This looks really good. However, if we wanted to go moodier, let me just create a copy of it. Let's go to the same film, but push it two stops. Um, in fact, that's such a change. I'm, I'm going to uh, decrease the temperature a bit here, get it back in the realm of what I envisioned. And as far as tint goes, I think we'll go like right about here, bring down the uh, exposure just a tiny bit. Um, deep, deep shadows. You can see the red kind of creeping in to everything. Uh, if, if I was to just not do uh, two stops, like instead of doing Portrait 160, push two stops and, did, and do one instead, we can kind of subtract that red out. This might be a better way to actually see it. So this is Portrait 160, pushed one stop. Here it is uh, not pushed at all. Let's make the, the white balance more similar. I'm going to survey these uh, or compare them. So Portrait 160 on the left, Portrait, six, Portrait 160 pushed one stop on the right. And now what I'm going to do, come on, unfreeze. Portrait 160 push two stops. And now here's where you can really see a change. We're gonna take Portrait 160 and push it two stops. And we get that red in the shadows. And I love that look. I think it looks super cool. Um, it just feels just moody as you can get. Um, one thing to note, I'm gonna take a tiny little detour here. When you were editing something light and airy like this, or like this, one huge advantage for all those light and airy photographers out there, and they don't they don't realize like what a great hand they've been dealt, <clears throat> is that you don't really have to do much skin retouching. the The very act of pulling up the dense or pulling up the midtones of an image to make it light and airy, like and expanding all of that, will clean up skin naturally. It'll make uh, pimples and wrinkles and blemishes and whatever. It'll just make them disappear. It's a trick that light and airy people, photographers have been doing way before digital, uh, just with how they overexpose their film and then kind of push that up um, at the lab. So when they're doing the scan, make a light and airy and they push it up, right? When you shoot <clears throat> dark and moody, you will actually increase the intensity of blemishes. You will make blemishes look worse than they are. Why? It's because you are increasing the contrast and the shadows and bringing the midtones down and it emphasizes uh, blemishes like this. And they're not even really blemishes. I mean, that's just like skin, like a human has, but it's brought out more. So it's very important to learn how to deal with that, how to do very delicate and natural looking skin retouching. And we will go into that in a future video. We'll go all into skin retouching uh, for those that don't want to spend all day doing it, but just like do a good job and do it quickly. And it's a very important skill to learn if you're a dark and moody photographer. And if you are a dark and moody photographer listening to me right now, you're probably shaking your head because you spend a lot of time doing basic skin retouching. So you would, you know, you'd be in here doing all this stuff. Um, anyway, just wanted to point that out because that is a different experience 
for the two kind of camps or two possible camps of photography. Okay, let's do one more comparison for Portra versus Portra Pushed. So you get a little better sense of the differences. Um, let's do, let's do a, kind of a lifestyle image here. I really like this one. Okay, so let's do Portra Original first. And this image could kind of go either way. Um, it's not your traditional dark and moody photo. It, it's, it's a little girl practicing ballet in a room. Uh, I guess it's kind of mysterious. She's not like smiling at the camera. It's like a slice of life. So this image could go with either a box speed portrait unpushed, unpushed look or a push look, depending if you want to make it a little more stylized. And let's do both and we can look at both. Let's do Portrait 800. We haven't talked about that one yet. Uh, what I like about Portrait 800 is that it's got a lot of depth in it already without pushing it. It's got a lot of color. Um, it's just a really neat film. It's the oldest out of those three films. So it was, I think it was the first one made out of Portrait 160, 400, and 800, with 400 being the last one made. <clears throat> Why in that order? I don't know. I mean, like, the films were actually made, like invented, released in that order. So Portrait 800, um, exposure. I don't know if I'm going to touch it because the midtones, I'm going to leave them a little bit dark. Uh, temperature and tint, I'm going to warm it up just a little bit. I'm going to look at neutrals. Where do I have neutrals? Maybe this wall, maybe the frame of this picture. Uh, her leotard, I guess. Looking around, I, I see a little bit of green in here. So I think I'm, I'm going to increase the tint. Oh, look at that, the tint's at minus 43. Not that that's right or wrong, but it's just pretty extremely towards green. I'm gonna just raise this up just a little bit. So it was at negative 43 and I'm gonna go to negative 32. Let's see how that looks globally. Yeah, so this is before and that's after. It's better, it looks way better. Okay, cool. See, that's not so hard. Uh, just do it 20,000 times and then it's super easy. Temperature, tint, exposure, everything looks good. Last thing I'm gonna do is go into tone profile and I'm gonna pick, uh, I think I'm gonna pick all soft. Does that open the room up too much? I'm gonna just do highlight soft. I don't think I wanna, I, I, I like, I love, I love, I love this situation right here. I like how dark that is. That looks cool. Uh, I don't know what the heck that is, but we'll just leave it alone. I don't want to reveal all that with all soft. I do want to bring back information in the, in the uh, curtains here. So instead of all soft where I'm bringing out shadow and highlight, I'm just going to do highlight soft and just bring in that kind of background area behind her. That looks, that looks killer. That looks really good. So here's before, here's after. It took like a few seconds. If I wasn't talking, I would edit it. I would edit this in about three seconds. Let's compare this to the push version. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to Portrait Pushed. I'm gonna grab Portrait 800 Push One Stop. Or, or let's be a little wild. Let's do Portrait 800 Push Two Stops. Uh, this film really, really changes when you push it two stops compared to one. Uh, I don't know if you can see it at home or not, uh, but you get, you get this kind of like almost split tone between green and purple, it, which again, it's, I say that and it sounds gross. It sounds terrible, uh, but it's actually just a really super cool look. And I think that Portrait 800 goes so crazy, weird, you know, changey with the shadows because it is an old film. It's an old emulsion. It's an old process and it doesn't handle being pushed and staying as clean as say Portrait 400. But I, I like it. I think it's a cool look. Okay, so Portrait 800, push two stops. We're gonna take a little bit of this green out like we did before. I, th I believe I left the temperature where it was. No, I warmed it up. Let's warm it up a little bit. And I'm going to take uh, or bring detail back into the curtains here. So let's do highlight soft. And we will compare these. And you can get a sense of like what, what you like. Let me minimize all this junk so you can see it. 
Boop. Okay. Come on, render. Okay, so these got a little bit flipped around. But on the left, you have Portra 800 pushed two stops. And on the right, you have Portra 800 pushed no stops, like just box speed. They're edited pretty much the same way. I, I didn't look exactly at the temperature and tint, uh, but they're both you know in the same ballpark. I also used uh, Highlight Soft to bring back the curtains. And I think for this photo, I, I think I like the more stylized look of Portra 800 Push 2 Stops. In particular, and I know this is like such a weird thing to like be excited about, uh, I like how the shadows and everything are being handled in the pushed side. So in the unpushed side, over here on the right, everything is very neutral. It's, it's just like straight up reality pretty much. On the left, when you push it, I just, I just love the tonality like through here, like behind this plant and just kind of the red and warm tones that you're seeing in the shadows. And you can see that all the way across the image, even in her skin, uh, everywhere. It's just really cool. Even this like bench, you know, we're starting to see a little bit of color in the shadow area and I dig it. So I don't know about you, like what you prefer. Uh, you can let me know in the comments, like which you prefer, pushed, not pushed, portrait push, portrait original, or Fuji original or Fuji pushed. Very different applications between the two. But yeah, I hope that helped answer some of your questions about what the difference is between pushed and unpushed films and how they look. And in particular, the four packs that we make here at Masson Labs. Fuji original, one of our all-time bestsellers. Fuji pushed, which is fantastic for like more exciting, like engagement, photography, things with a lot of color. And then you've got Portra for like everyday moments, like reality, nostalgia, at home. And then Portra pushed, which is for the dark and moody fans out there, boudoir, fashion, uh, just, just a mysterious feeling in general. Yeah, Portra pushed. So, okay, that, that is what I have to say. Um, <laughs> I hope you really enjoyed this. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and like this video. It means a lot to us. And it will also make sure that you don't miss out on any of our future ones. We do these every single week and we have a huge back catalog of videos. If you want to learn more about anything in particular about editing, dark, moody, light and airy, boudoir, wedding, engagement, street photography, everything. So don't miss out. Uh, we also have an amazing Facebook community where we encourage people to learn and grow together. And you can get to it right here on Facebook. So just search Mass and Labs Community. It's a fantastic group. And you can even drop in your images in that group and ask for an edit with any product that we make. And you can see what your image looks like with Mass and Labs. And hopefully you can change your editing life with a simpler, faster workflow based on the timeless look of real film that we've been developing since 2012. It wasn't an easy journey, but we wanna share these tools with you. Uh, you can also reach us directly at m.me forward slash Mass and Labs if you wanna slide into our DMs and we are happy to answer any questions you have. So until next time, I hope you have a great day and happy editing.